Chapter 15, Inheritance and Polymorphism, Solution Movie 15.1. So in this exercise, you're going to test what you've learned about inheritance to create a subclass and override an inherited property and methods. So for our first step, we create a playground named inheritance.playground. File new playground and I call it inheritance. Okay, so next step says declare a person class with first name and last name properties initialized to an empty string. Class person and first name equals an empty string and last name equals an empty string. Next we declare a full name computed property that returns the first name and last name separated by a space. So full name we always specify in a computed property its return type. I'm going to return first name then a space and then last name. Alright, our next step says declare a patient class as a subclass of person. Type class, patient, subclass of person. Next we declare a patient ID property in the patient class and initialize it to an empty string. So I've got a property called patient ID and we set that to an empty string. Next, it says override the inherited full name property and return a last name uppercase and first name separated by a comma and space. So last comma space first with last in all uppercase. So we say override var full name string. And in our override, we're going to say return last name uppercase plus a comma and a space, plus first name. All right, so let's test the inherited property. In the person class, we'll set first name to Jane and last name to Doe. And then it says add code to the playground that instantiates the person and patient classes and checks their full name properties. So I'll create an instance of the person class and another instance of the patient class. And now I'll say person.fullName. See it's set to Jane Doe as it should be. And then patient.fullName is Doe Jane. So we've successfully overridden this computed property. Now for the next step, it tells us in the person class, add a string array property named broken rules and initialize it to an empty string array. So we can do that. We have a property called broken rules. We're going to initialize it to an empty string array. All right now it tells us add the following method to the person class. So we have a method Named check required values. And we can see that it returns a string array. So this method checks if self.first name is empty, that if self.broken rules append first name. And we say if self dot last name is empty, we append to our string array last name. And then at the end we say return self dot broken rules. All right, so our next step says in the patient class override the check required values method. 
within the method called the superclass method, and then check if the patient ID property is empty. If so, add patient ID to the broken rules array, and then return the array from the method. All right, so when you're overriding a method in Swift, the easiest way is to type the name of the method. You can see code completion pops up. If I press return, it's smart enough to know that this is an override and adds the keyword in for me, including the return value. So the first thing we're going to do is call the superclass method. So I type super dot check required values. Next, we're going to check if self dot patient ID is empty. We'll say self dot broken rules append patient ID. And then we return the array. And that completes our method. So in the next step, it says in the person class, set the last name to an empty string. So I go ahead and do that. And you can see this doesn't look very good, but we've got a method that's going to check to make sure all of our required information is entered. So our next step says add code to the bottom of the playground that calls the check required values method on the person and patient objects. I say person dot check required values. And we can see that it says last name is required and it has not been specified. So let's try that in patient. So we can see that our inherited method is working properly. In this case, for the person class, it calls up to super and these values are checked. And then we return to this method we check if patient ID is empty, in this case it is, we also add that to the array. So we've met with success. We've been able to successfully override a property and a method.